Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. In this video, we're going to be doing a SQL tutorial on set operators. What we're going to be covering is what is a set operator and what set operators are available in SQL Server. So what is a set operator? Set operators allow you to combine the results of multiple sets into a single result set. So as an example, if I want to run two select statements but return only one result, I can use a set operator to achieve this. However, there are rules that we are going to be going over in this video. So the set operators available in SQL Server, if you're working with Oracle, these may differ. Union, union all, so this could just be classed as one under the union umbrella, accept and intersect as well. So just as an overview of what they do, um, so if we first look at union or union all, they take the results from two result sets and combine all of that result. So we'll be going through an example shortly in SQL Server, but we will be doing separate videos on each of these to show you how they work. So we take two result sets and just combine them together using union or union all and we'll also be going through the differences in separate videos between the two except where you will take one result set and what it will do is return all the results that exist in that result that don't exist in the second input the second result set and then intersect will show you the results of what of all the results that exist in both of those sets. So let's talk about some rules for set operators. The number and order of columns must be the same. So we'll go through an example in SQL Server Management Studio shortly and data types must also be compatible. So let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio. Like I said, this video is just a short introduction into a set operators, so we'll go through some examples of these rules. So we're in SQL Server Management Studio now, guys. I'm going to be looking at the bookshop database as always. And as you can see here, I've got two tables called Customers and Customers Import. So I'm just going to run a select all initially from both of those tables just to show you the differences between the two uh, results. So as you can see, the first result, we've got a number of columns in there. We've got a customer ID, we've got first name, middle name, and so on. And for in the customer's import table, we don't have an ID. Um, it's just a we've got first name, middle name, surname, and so on. So if I wanted to combine both of these result sets into one, I could use the union operator. But again, remember when we just went over the rule, the number of columns must be the same. So if I execute this statement now, I will get a failure and that message states all queries combined using a union intersect or accept operator must have an equal number of expressions in their target list. So what that means is if we have one result set that has 10 columns and another result set that has five columns and we want to combine them, we're unable to do so. We must have the same number of columns in both our inputs to be returned. Now another rule that was stated was the order of columns must be the same, which is correct but not entirely true. So what we could do is if we wanted to say we'll select the first line of the custom address and the second line from our customers table and then what we'll do is mix it up a bit here so within the customers import table we will select the first name and surname so now we've got two columns from each result set so we won't get a failure to say the number of columns must be the same but if I run that query we can see 
SQL didn't actually know that those columns are completely different. So in terms of ordering, you have to be careful yourself because SQL can't work that out for you. All it's going to check is you've got the same number of columns and that they have got compatible data types. So according to SQL, even though I'm combining the first line of address and second line of address to first name and surname, that's still valid because those data types for those columns are compatible. So you have to be careful within terms of the order you actually write the columns because if they are compatible then it will be a valid um, combination of those that are returned. Now let's have a look at different data types. So in our customers table we've got a date of birth column which is just set to a date data type and let's try and see if we can set that to first name and what I'll do I'll just open up these tables in Object Explorer on the left hand side so if we look at the columns we've got date of birth which is set to a date not null and then in the customers import table our first name is an nvarchar 50 which is set to not null so we are trying to combine a date and an mvarchar 50 as two data types. So if I try and execute that query now, we'll get a conversion error. So just going over there, one of the rules that the data types must be compatible. So I hope you have found that introduction to set operators very beneficial. Like I say, we're going to be going through each operator in a lot more detail in other videos, so do check out those on my channel. If you are interested in SQL, business intelligence, data analysis, check out my other videos on my channel. Subscribe to the channel and click that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. I do upload... Uh, well, I do try to upload videos regularly. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.